Praise the Lord. God bless you. So glad to have you with us here at God's Got a Plan. You know, truly, this is the day that the Lord has made, and I really do believe that God wants you to be happy. He wants you to be blessed. He wants you to be walking in his favor. He wants you to know his love. God is so good. But you know, many of us today are walking in fear, living in fear. Many of us are not able to really move forward and let's just say take advantage of the opportunities and the different things that are presenting itself. Uh, we're not able to really embrace those things mainly because we've, uh, we've given place to fear. You know, the Bible says the first, sign of, the first sign of wisdom is to fear God. You know, and when we talk about fearing God, we're talking about reverential fear for God, having a reverential fear for God, whereas you reverence him. But all of this other stuff, when you really look at what you're afraid of and what's stopping you and keeping you from accomplishing those goals, those dreams, those desires, deep-seated desires that are in your heart, you have to sometimes question yourself, why am I allowing this to still happen? So today, saints, I want to talk to you about fear. Fear not. That's my theme for today. Fear not. Fear not. Uh, you see, you, we have to live the message. You see, you know, those of us who are in Christ, those of us who call themselves Christians, you have to live the message. Give no, matter of fact, James says, give no place to the devil. Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. Give no place to the devil. So we, and, and the devil, he loves to drop that fear. He loves to drop that spirit on you that will cause you to, let's just say, take a back step instead of moving forward. Cause you to keep looking in your rears. You know, you, those of you who are driving a car, you don't drive the car looking constantly in the, mirror, in the rear view mirror. No, you look through your, you know, your, 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 your main uh, windshield, you look through your windshield at the traffic, the flow of traffic, the speed of traffic, you're reading your signs and so on and so forth. Every now and then you'll glance and you'll take a look in your rearview mirror, see what's behind you, see what's going on, and, and so on and so forth. And I know these new cars, these new cars that we have out here now, all this technology packed in the car. Matter of fact, if something comes alongside you, do you get a little light on the side letting you know you got a car in your blind spot? So, I mean, you know, we, we, we are, you know, we, this technology have really moved us forward in such a way. But we as a people, we can't allow fear to rob us of that life that God has called us to. See, God has an unchangeable love. He has an unchangeable love for you. I want, in other words, you know, he's loving you. He's loving you to the fullest. He's giving you all that he can give you that can, let's just say, complete you and make you that man, that woman he wants you to be. But now it's up to you now to uncover that which is in you by bringing it out. So God's favor and goodwill should comfort the hearts and minds of those of us who are in him. His favor. Thank you, Jesus, for favor. Favor, favor is knocking at your door today. And God wants you to know you are too blessed to be stressed. And I'm here to tell you and remind you that the devil is a liar. Don't feed. Hey, matter of fact, don't drink that Kool-Aid. Mm -mm. Don't drink the devil's Kool-Aid. Because if you drink the devil's Kool-Aid, you're going to find yourself operating in fear. Double-mindedness, worry, and all that other stuff that will cause you to, to be at a standstill. Mm-mm. Got to, you got to unearth yourself. You got to get to moving and grooving and understand that the best is yet to come. And I, you know, I, I should be curious enough to want to know what it is. 
When you woke me, when I woke up this morning, Lord, I don't know. I don't I don't know really what's going to happen in this day. I know I have some plans. I know there's some things I want to do. There's some things I want to make happen. But God, what is your will for my life? And then I have to have a lively hope and expectation that what God has put in place for me is going to benefit me. It's going to benefit you. It's going to benefit your household. It's going to benefit your church. It's going to benefit your job. It's going to benefit your business. It's going to benefit your community. We're here to be a blessing. You're here to be a blessing. You know, there's a verse of scripture that says, where there is no vision, people perish. In other words, there's somebody depending upon you, whether you know it or not. And you have to be operating in that vision in order to bring it to pass, in order to be a blessing to that someone else that's relying upon you, depending upon you. Oh, I thank God for Jesus. I thank God for connecting good people. I thank God for the good people that are in my life. I thank God for the very special young lady I met today who's also doing this videography. And I mean, she's, she's, she's thirsty for this. She's, she, she has a love for this. And when you love something, you're going to pursue it with your whole heart. And that's what's going to bring the best out of you. And really, that's what this is doing. This is, this is just priming the pump. Oh, Lord Jesus. You know, sometimes, you know, you got some of those old pumps and you want to get that water out of it because you've been hitting that lever and hitting that lever and hitting that lever and nothing been happening. Sometimes you got to pour a little bit of oil, a little bit of water in there or something so that you can get that, you know, prime that pump. So when you start hitting that lever, stuff can come and God want to do a new thing in you. But fear not. Look at my opening scripture. Isaiah 43 and one says this. Ooh. But now, thus says the Lord who created you. Oh, man, I can stop right there. Thus saith the Lord who created you. I wonder how many of us have remade ourselves over into something else. Thinking that I'm making myself into that image, that man, that woman that I want to be, and which may have taken me away from the person that God want me to be. Are you hearing me? Let me, let me finish. Let me read this to you. Then we can get into the talk. Oh, Jacob, and whatever your name is, put your name there. That's it. And, and, and God who formed you, oh, Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine, meaning you belong to God. Lord Jesus, that should make you feel special. Now, I know your man might not be acting right. I know your woman, you might not know what's going on and she's not talking to you or treating you the way you, you know, used to be treated. But I'm here to tell you today that God is the same God yesterday, today and forever. When all else fail, when everybody else fail, walk away, whatever the case may be, understand God is consistent. He's going to be an ever present uh, power force. He's going to be an ever present help in a time of trouble, in a time of need. Sometimes, you know, we want to depend upon people, but, you know, people, we all fall short. You know, not to say that you're unloved or unliked or whatever the case may be, but, hey, people get caught up in stuff and you're caught up in stuff. We all get caught up in stuff that might drive our attention somewhere else. But that's what's so beautiful about God, because God is so in love with you. Mm, mm, mm. God is so in love with you. He can tell you every hair on your head. He can tell you every molecule that's running through your body and he can. Are you hearing me now? I can only hope that the blood that's running wrong through your vein got his DNA in it. Thank you, Jesus. In other words, truly, I am a child of God and I got his DNA to prove it. Thank you, Jesus. Are you hearing me? That's my daddy. That's my father. He is my Abba father. He's my father. You know, and it's a beautiful thing. Look what he says in the second verse, Isaiah 43 and 2. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt for your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in your place, since you are precious in my sight. Mm, mm, mm. I tell you, you are precious to God. 
you are precious to God. And if you are precious to God, understand you are precious. Now, you need to be able to treat yourself like you're precious. You need to be able to love on yourself and treat yourself the way you deserve to be treated. Sometimes we go around or go about looking for people to treat us a certain way. And if we don't get it, we feel less than. Understand this, my brother, my sister. God has already validated you. Let God validate you. And others will, what? They will, they will confirm what God has already told you. Oh, I'm here to tell you today, you are special. I'm here to tell you today that the best is yet to come. I'm here to tell you today that you haven't even seen your best self yet. But if you can just keep on keeping on and keep on pressing, and if you can walk away from the fear and begin to walk in faith. Mm, mm, mm. Whew. Whew. I mean, I, this thing just got me just, mm. I, I just feel it right now. and I'm feeling it right now. Can you feel it? Can you feel that you need to do something different? Can you feel that it's your season, it's your time? Can you feel that it's time to shift and change lanes and to maybe speed up some stuff and get to work and do that something that's going to, ooh, you got to leave fear behind now. You're going to have to leave fear behind. That means doubt, double-mindedness, worry, all that mama drama stuff. You got to let it go. Oh, my God, you got to let it go. You got to let it go because you are too good a person. As God says, you are precious. You are precious in his sight. You are precious in his sight. And look what he said. You have been honored and I have loved you. Therefore, I will give man for you and people for your life. Fear not, for I am with you. Fear not, for the Lord is with you. Mm, mm, mm. What more can he do? He has opened up the door. He has shown you the way. What more can he do? Now, if you're not willing to get that monkey off your back, if you're not willing to let go of the fear, you can't charge God for your failure. God wants you to be successful. He wants you to be happy. He wants you to be blessed. You have to do your part at making it happen. And, you know, the Bible says, without faith, it is impo I believe, uh, it's impossible to please God. Hebrews, Hebrews, uh, have faith in God. Hebrews 11 and 22, something like that. Have faith in God. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So if you're operating in fear, you're not pleasing God. And if you're not pleasing God, that means you're not on the right path, the right road, whatever you want to call it. You're making your journey longer, harder. And God wants to throw some frills in there. He wants you to be happy. He wants you to know, man, God. And I'm not saying every day is going to be a blessed day. I'm not going to say every day you're going to go through life and you're going to say, well, yeah, I'm a Christian, so ain't no trouble going to come my way. Every one of us is going to be subject to dealing with some of that. The Bible says Jesus learned obedience by the things that he suffered. So if he had to go through, and we know the Bible, the scriptures say that he was a man without spot or blemish. In other words, he went back to the father without spot or blemish. He was, he was clean when he came down, when he entered the planet, and he was clean when he left. In other words, all that strife, all that stuff that the people was heaping upon him, none of it was able to st stick and stay. None of it was able to change his demeanor or to change his his, his lifestyle or his behavior. He, ain't, he didn't curse nobody out. He didn't hit nobody upside the head with a garbage can lid or with a, or he didn't try to shoot nobody and he ain't try to, he ain't backbite and talk about nobody and put people down. No, no, no. He stuck to the script. And God has given us a script that we too are to follow. And when you're following that script, you're not going to give place or make room for fear because you realize there's so much more to you than what the devil trying to bring out of you. Look at what the devil was able to bring out of you in the past. Think about it now. It is not that, and you're not that far removed from it now. I know you've been a Christian for some time and, you know, you think you got it going on and this and that and that and this. Well, you do have it going on because Christ is in your life. But we all have some history. You know, I like to say that the, the you know, the earth is a library. The earth is a library. 
In every one of us is a book in the library, and each one of us have a different story to tell. Now, if you're not living the life that you want to live, or should be living, I should say, maybe your book is in the wrong part of the, of the library. You know, maybe you're in science fiction when you should be in autobiography. Are you hearing me? See, you got to be able to see this because sometimes we set ourselves up for drama. We set ourselves up for that craziness and that stuff that don't make sense. And understand, every day we're writing something in the book. Every day. And sometimes you can go in the library and find a book on the floor. And, and, you know, some people, what they will do will step over it, walk around it. They won't pick it up. They'll, they'll kick it. Some, you know, you, you get a bad kid, he'll kick it. Or maybe a bad adult, they'll kick it. And many of us have been like those books on the floor, on the ground. And we've been stepped on, been kicked, and oh, Lord Jesus. But today, 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 see, your past is not going to define you. Understand God has already has a plan in place that's going to bring you to something more than what you ever had. And I know you might have had a good life before you picked up the drugs or the this and the that. I know life was great before you hooked up with Sister Butterbean or hooked up with Slick Willie or Crazy Eddie. I know, I know. You had a good life until you made that mistake. But God is telling you today that he's offering you something even better if you can let go of the fear, the worry, the double-mindedness. If you can just grab hold to some faith, some God kind of faith, God wants you to know that the best is still ahead and he's going to do something in your life that's going to really bless you. See, God, he's the only one that can make a way out of no way. You know, there are times in our life when we just can't figure out, I don't know which way to go. I feel like I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place and Lord, can you please make a way out of, out of this no way that I find, this path I find myself on today. See, and God says, what did he say? He says, fear not, for I have redeemed you. In other words, he paid the price so you can live. He paid the price so you can come into your own, so you can be that man, that woman God has called you to be. Well, first of all, you want to look, look around. Look at the people God connected you with. That'll give you a sign as to whether you're in the will of God or whether you're in the will of that other guy. I don't even want to call his name. Are you hearing me? See, so when you look at the company, because you show me your friends and I'll show you your future, you get with the wrong folk, you end up in the, you know, you end up behind bars. You end up on skid row. You end up in bad place. You get with the right people, you can learn some things. You get with the right people, you can grow, you can inspire, and you can be that somebody <laughs> that God has called you, purpose you to be. See, understand this. God already see the end result of our life. He already knows the end result of your life. But you have to be able to see getting to the end result going to be some ups and downs, ins and outs, and all this other stuff that we're going to have to deal with. When you got saved, God didn't say you wasn't going to deal with some trials and tests. All that's part of the process. That's all going to bring you into a place where you have a desire and see a need to draw closer to God. I don't know who I'm speaking to today, but you better grab hold to this message. Because you still have time to come into your, into your own. You still have time to demonstrate your uniqueness. As I say, you are a designer's original. There's not another person on the planet like you. Not another person on the planet like you. You got your own DNA. Your own, hey, your, you have your own plans and ideas. But let them be God-inspired and God-led. Are you hearing me? He says, fear not, for I have redeemed you and called you by your name. And as I said, he paid the price for you. So you know, it's no longer I who live, but it's Christ who now lives in me. So you have to allow him to be alive in you, not dead, not shut down, not handcuffed. You got to free him up to do what he does best. It, you know, it, why? Because he wants you to know you are precious to God. You are precious to God, so precious to God that he spared, his, he spared not his best when he gave you his son. Why? Because he want to bring you into, he want to bring you into your greatness. So when, when we say you are precious in his sight, what he's saying is this. You 
are irreplaceable. I'm going to say that again. You are irreplaceable. Nobody's going to do it the way you do it, whatever it is that you're called to do. Nobody's going to act or make, make, make you feel or make them feel the way you make them feel. In other words, there's something uniquely special about you. You are so unique. You are irreplaceable. And let me say this, and I'm not trying to shoot you to heaven too soon, but you're definitely going to be missed when you're gone. But you're to be enjoyed while you're here. Are you hearing me? I'm going to say it again. You're going to be missed while you're gone. But God wants you to be enjoyed while you are here. God put you in the lives of others so you can be happy. So you can be a blessing to others. So that you can make a difference in the lives of others. In whatever uh, way possible, whatever the gift, whatever the talent, whatever the skill, the ability that God has given you to be a blessing to others, use it and do all that you can do to bring the best. You want to bring the best product to the table. That's it. And, 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 and see, it's, it's not good enough just to bring that which is good. See, understand God gave you his best. And if he gave you his best, it's because he wants you to bring out the best. Mm, mm, mm. And, and you can't do that now if you're putting yourself down. Whew. You can't put yourself down and expect to make it. See, see success and happiness is not going to come out of stinking thinking. Not going to come out of the beat down, the, the, the beat up and, you know, hey, because you know something, people can call your names and talk about you. That's one thing. And I'm not going to say it don't hurt and it don't trouble you. But when you say these bad things about yourself, when you say these nasty things about yourself, when you put your own self down, it's harder to come back from that. You got to let yourself go and you have to be able to see that you've given place to fear. Got to let it go. Got to let it go. God's got you. I'm going to let you know now. God's got you. You got to stop beating up on yourself, putting yourself down. You, see, the windows of heaven is open. Every day you wake up, the windows of heaven is open. Mm, mm, mm. God want to shower you with those blessings from on high to let you know that the best is yet to come, to let you know you, it, it has not yet appeared what you shall be. You just have to keep on holding on. Mm, mm, mm. Thank you, Jesus. See, that's what you should be saying right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, because I don't know where I'd be if it wasn't for you. I don't know what I'd be doing if it wasn't for you. Thank you, Jesus. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him would not perish but would have everlasting life. He's come to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. You were too blessed to be stressed, my brother, my sister. Understand the best is yet to come. God doing a great and wonderful thing in your life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I'm going to lift him. I'm going to give him some praise. I'm going to give him all of what he is due. Why? Because he is worthy of all the praise and all the glory. But let me give you this before I close. I got like a couple of minutes left. Let me just give you this. You need to discover yourself in God, meaning you need to understand what your role in your function is in the kingdom. You need to understand your role, your purpose in your function in the kingdom. Now, number one, how can God best use you? That's a question. How can God best use you? That's what I should be asking myself today. And that second thing is, can God trust and depend upon me to do my part? Can God trust and depend upon you to do your part? That's it. Hey, let go of the fear. Walk in faith. Understand that all things are working together for the good. Irregardless of what went down last night, last week, past this whole month, what went down all year this year, understand all things are truly working together for the good. And God wants you to let go of the fear and walk by faith. Father God, in the precious name of Jesus, I claim my God, my brother, my sister for the kingdom. I pray your blessing, Father God, to be bestowed upon them. That blessing of love, that blessing of faith. 
I pray, Father, that you would help my brother, my sister, that one who is struggling in, in wrestling with some kind of situation or problem, Father God, that is meant to instill fear and doubt and worry in their spirit and in their minds. I pray that you will help them, Father God, to be able to lay it at your feet, to cast all their cares upon you and to walk in the power of your might to know that all things are truly working together and coming together for them now. Let it begin to come together for them now in the precious name of Jesus. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Love you so much. I, again, I want to thank you for joining us here. Know that we love you. I thank God so much for my brother Al, Alan Carlton. If you ever need a videographer, if you need someone to, to help or to, let's just say, to uh, uh, video something that you might be doing, well, he's a good man to call. And then I have another friend that I can also give you insight on. So please reach out to me. Don't forget we have a prayer line. You can uh, uh, check with us on the prayer line, and, and uh, yeah, I'm sure you'll be blessed if you join us. If you're blessed, and if you've been following us this, the, the, the years we've been doing this, I want to thank you. Again, thank you for your, uh, just your, your, your input, words of encouragement, and more than that, I want to thank you for your love. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Don't forget the theme now, fear not. Love you. Bye-bye. It's